Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and welcome back to Norvis. Yes, I'm back down on the ground again. I've um, finished off my travels around the universe. <laughs> I did a few more things before I got back here though, so let's have a quick look. Um, back up on Frost. It seems to have got dark, but never mind. Um, so let's see, we, we had the um, system over here that was ready to start launching these um, beryllium ingots off to... Um, off to other planets, so that's that's um, all good and set up. And and I got that had that configured to fire up fire them at Norvis orbit, and I've got a little bit further with that, so I'll touch on that in a moment. The other thing I was doing was waiting for the um, Coverex loop here to finish, and it has now basically finished. We've got all the uranium we know what to do with here, so it's being passed round. Um, to be honest, I probably shouldn't have these chests in here in the middle. It's it's a little bit silly and just means means instead of having a steady flow around here, it's doing well this nonsense. But it doesn't actually matter, it's it's absolutely fine. <clears throat> and it means we've now got all the uranium we need, and as you can see, we've now built up a huge supply of these uranium fuel cells that are going all the way down this belt. That's a ridiculous number of them, that's absolutely crazy. Um, all the way down here, where we've got this other loop going round and round as well, and that'll keep everything running quite happily. Now you'll notice all these um, uranium, um, all these nuclear reactors have just shut down um, and that's because I've got as you as you hopefully remember from the last episode I had this I had it set up so these steam tanks up at the top here fill up and then they gradually empty through these turbines and that produces the power to run the base and when they're full or when they're not empty rather we stop putting fuel into the nuclear reactors so they shut down so they don't just burn through all the fuel unnecessarily because this base hardly uses any power compared to what these are capable of producing if we have a look at the power output graph you can see we're using 21 megawatts out of a potential 466 we're using what's that that's um five about about five percent so i've massively overspecced this i it, it, this is, is a bit silly if I'm being honest so I probably shouldn't have gone quite to quite this extent I should have, I should have just put in one reactor and um, and ignored the, um, the 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 bonus for putting them together oh these two have just kicked back in again that's interesting so these are now um, cooking back up again so that must mean that these have got down to yes you've got down to 1.2 thousand um, steam so these will now start to so eventually these uh, we'll kick back in again and start running um, once we get once the temperature gets up to sufficiently high, and then we'll start um, filling these tanks back up again. So that's the system seems to be working. That's uh, that's quite nice. These ones up here on the other side, they're still at 1.7 thousand, so they're not quite so full. What I should probably do is run a pipe across here to link these two sets together so that they they work in in sync with each other, so that all all, all four of these fire up at the same time. Um, but never mind. It's it's working pretty well as it is. We're and gaining little bits of efficiency on this is kind of a waste of time because as you can see, there's so much fuel available here. And if we look at this power, it's still got nine uh, patch of ore. It's still got 918,000 in it. That's a crazy amount. So I'm not I'm not worried about. I'm genuinely not worried about my um, my uranium supply and power supplies on this planet. So from here, I flew. I did fly, admittedly, back to Norvis first, and I can't remember exactly why I did that right right now. Or did I? I don't know. What I did eventually get my find my way to Norvis orbit though, and up here I did a few little things, messed around with a few things. So we now put in this beryllium ingot catching pot here, and a machine here to turn the ingot into plates. So we've got a system here that's converting. So I've got I've got the beryllium plates on my on my bus on my space bus. <laughs> space bus. So that's that's working as planned, and I've passed that down here, and I've started building up all the stuff I needed for my um, advanced science, for my uh, astronomic science packs. So if we have a look at the diagram. You can see that um, in order to make this, not not only do I need to have the beryllium plate, uh, the uh, plates for ver in various points, I also need to start doing the um, the telescope telescope based stuff. So I built up a machine somewhere along here. Yes, this this one. The, this one here is making these. Is, is making the mirrors for the telescopes. Then I'm making the telescopes. Then I'm and, and then I'm also making the um, the what, what do you call it? Um, the frames to be put into into the telescopes. So yeah, the telescopes took a, a bit of extra stuff, but I think I already had pretty much all of it up here. So it wasn't it wasn't too difficult. It was just essentially putting in a couple of machines and using things I already had up here. Um, there was something I needed light oil for. What was that? Oh yes, that was the um, 
that was making the actual plates themselves so we've uh, t we've touched on that that's something i haven't brought up yet so one of the things that's on my on my shopping list for, uh, for the next time i come up here is to bring quite a lot of light oil with me now i do have I do have heavy oil here and I have water so in theory I could have started cracking the um, the heavy oil to uh, in, into light oil using where is it this process uh, water and heavy oil but uh, those, those numbers aren't good we're using seven, 70 inputs to make 30 outputs and given that it all comes up in barrels therefore each unit of stuff is a is a tricky resource to, to bring up. I, um, actually, now that said, the water could be free now. It could come from the um, from one of those uh, cannons on frost. I need to put one in there as well, perhaps. Anyway, so um, it would still it would still not be good because I'd have to bring up 40, 40 heavy oil in order to make thirty light oil. So I, I don't want to do that. I'm going to start bringing. I'm going to bring up the um, the light oil as well. Eventually, that'll get piped down here. It'll go in here along with all of the other things. We, what do we have? We have. Um, Beryl, glass, and coal. The glass there's loads of up here. Coal there isn't very much of, so that's the other thing on my shopping list. I need to bring up loads of coal to get this going. Um, but that's mostly done. It just needs it just needs oil to be fed in at the, either at the bottom here or maybe up here on the side. I'll probably go in, in at the bottom. Well, for now, in the future, I may discover that I need more than one of these machines. Um, but we'll we'll see how that goes. Next thing is I've built, I've, I've built up some telescopes, I've placed them in here, so we've got um, the three different types here for the uh, UV, IR and visible types of um, uh, of uh, telescopy. Telescopy? There's, there's a word there somewhere I'm sure. Uh, it's not been built up properly because I ran out of roboports and I couldn't be bothered to go in and do it by hand, so this is just, this is just waiting for me to come back up with roboports, so that's another thing on my shopping list. That's as far as I got though, because I was, I was running out, I also ran out of the um, the, the, the scaffold I think which is why there's a sort of gap here and I haven't gone any further along here so that's something I need to I need to continue to work work on but it but it is basically it's, it's starting to come together now these um these frame these telescopes here will turn the blank frames into um, into the into the appropriate types of frames and I then I'm going to need to combine those with data cards I think which come from over here somewhere down here. Here we go, this machine makes the data cards. So I'm going to need to have a system that not just not only puts them in there but ships them off way down to the other end as well. And I'm going to need to work out why this has stopped. What's it run out of? It's run out of substrates, which has run out of the, the rough substrates, which has run out of glass. Why is this run out of glass? Okay, apparently all of my glass <laughs> all of my glasses come down here to be made into uh, into these things so we're going to bring up a lot more glass with us as well but that should be automated because glass is a thing I've been thinking I've, I've, I've already I already know that I need if that makes sense so I'm gonna have to split this off and then have that fed somehow all the way along here and this is gonna mm, be a bit of a mess could I use this bell at this point no this is where iron and copper go so I'm probably gonna have to feed it all the way down here somewhere and shove it on one of these belts I just oh I would Ah, this is where the data cards already are. Interesting, where's that coming from? It's been a little while since I put this in, so I might be a little rusty. Oh. No, it's coal. Okay, so I'm planning to feed the data cards onto the bottom side of this, by the looks of it. Okay, that's not too bad. So I'll have I'll, ha I'll have a thing coming down from here that will go un under, under all of here and then feed these... In fact, oh, nah, I've already done that. <laughs> okay, so the data cards are, are being fed out here onto this belt, through here, and along, and then along this belt to be to be passed along to the other end. Now I can then combine all of that. So I've got the um, I'll have the various types of, um, of frames and data cards. I can combine those into the various types of data cards, which can then be combined to make astronom astronomic data, astronomic catalog, and and so on and so on. So there's there's still quite a lot more to be done here. Um, I, yeah, it's. I don't think there's anything that's especially complicated. But because I'm doing it in space, it means the resources are a bit harder to get into place. I have to build up the the scaffolding underneath everything I build. So it's just generally, it's a slightly bigger job than it would be if I was able to do it back down on a planet. But there's nothing too complex. Nothing that should really give me too many problems. So I'm not too worried about this. It's just going to take a bit of time and a bit of fiddling to get it all together. 
So that's as far as I've got with the ast uh, um, astronomic science packs. Um, and when I have eventually made them, I can put them onto the top side of this belt. And that'll feed them in over here into the rest of the science shenaniganery over there. And uh, we'll find out what you can do with astronomic science. So, in my time back down on Norvis, though, I noticed there's been a few things that have been being destroyed. Now, I don't know... Though I, I saw a thing ping up earlier while, we were, while I was talking about another planet. But now, at this point, I don't actually know where it where it happened um yeah just generally i don't know but whilst i was back on norvis i've, I've done a bit more tidying up as well and i know this isn't hugely exciting but it, it's a thing that i've done so i'm going to talk about it a bit because it's it, it is an important part of gen the general progress so up here we used to have an oil mine a copper mine here and a copper mine here above the wall and the wall went round here in a sort of a, a loop and that was all fed by the um by the belt that used to come up from the ammunition factory down here there was a belt coming up through all the way along here next to these um, power poles up to here and then the reason there's this um, bridge going across here is because we have the ammo belt running across here all the way across here across this bridge as well and presumably somewhere around here it went up or across I'm, I can't remember exactly but at the very anyway it fed into the walls that were going around these two mines and the wall that was going around this one now what I've done now is I've switched over to the new style of doing things I've got an outpost station here with its own um, ammo and wood supply here to keep the turrets going spare turrets repair packs all, all sort of the usual stuff I put in these things and some more and some fuel for the flamethrowers and I've got a um, <laughs> some burning biters up here um, and then I've got my turrets across here to just just to keep just to keep this area safe this is this is dead standard it's exactly as I always do it what I've also done over here is I've had this sort of protrusion going out into the water because what you often get when you have when you have this sort of shape of land if you just build up to the edge of the land if I'd only come up to here then the biters would come in along here and they'd sort of mob the corner here and it's a bit like an external corner but actually even worse because it wouldn't even be being supported by another set of turrets coming down here because again there's water there so that would be that's an extremely vulnerable point so what I've done is I've built this out along here and that means these turrets can then finish these biters off as they come along here um, I'd be interested to see how this would deal with a, a large attack because it does occur to me that the spitters will probably just line up along here and attack the turrets however the biters will keep moving and carry on over here which means these turrets will be able to concentrate on the spitters without being distracted by the biters being slightly closer so I think it should work quite well um, should. <laughs> the other thing I've done up, uh, up up over here is I've built this diagonal wall over here. So this is something a bit new. I've, um, I've been thinking I should come up with a way of putting in some diagonal defences for a while because there are places like down down here. This could have benefited quite well from a diagonal wall. If I put one in sort of across here, that would have been a bit too too steep. Maybe, I could, maybe I'll need to come up with a 30 degree wall as well or something that can go across a gap like that. Uh, but certainly here, I could have put one across there like that, instead of having this double outpost section thing like this, and that would have been a bit neater and a bit and and a, and a bit less defences perhaps. I'm not I'm not quite sure. Um, so there's been a few places where that, that that would have been useful. So I finally got around to building one up. It took a bit longer to build because it's a it was a bit of a faff and 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 so on. But I've got again I've got the um, the robot ports going all the way up, it providing cover for cover and repairs for it all and a, and to help me build it as well the, the flame turrets I've put in like this so we've got one pointing up and one pointing across because you can't have them at 45 degrees and if I turn some of this off again can I show it yeah so I don't know if you can see it's not very obvious I'll try and highlight this in the in the um, in, in post-production um, but the the flame turrets have a have a sort of an arc that only goes covers 90 degrees across from them so this one is aiming everywhere from here up to about here but not here so we've got this one then aiming from here around to here. Now this does mean I, I do have full coverage then with these. If I turn on the uh, turret coverage, you can see there's the red, the bigger red area going all the way along here. So it's quite it's it's, it's well covered. Everywhere is defended by the flame turrets, but they do also cover the um, cover the the inside of my walls as well. So there's there's potential for friendly fire along here if the biters breach through the wall now I'm hoping the biters aren't going to breach through the wall and it's not going to be I'm not going to have the same sort of problems I used to have with the um, with the plasma turrets in angel bobs where you get a plasma turret just blowing up half your defense with one shot uh, we'll have to see how that goes as I say I hopefully I will never need to find out because the biters won't make it through the walls and then it'll be all, all be absolutely fine so yeah and and you can see if you look at this you can you can tell why I didn't want to do um, 
why I didn't want to do 90 degree walls along here. I'd have had to either go along here and then up here, which would be very long walls, and I'd have had to do another sort of a two-parter. Or I'd have ended up um, going up here and out like that, but that's that would be an external corner, and as I've covered, they're very, very hard to defend. Or secret option number three, I suppose, I could have gone up, up there and across there, or across there and down there, but then these are all building up enormous defences, there's enormous areas to clear out, and there's no resources in this patch, apart from that tiny uranium patch there, well, and it's big iron. Okay, there aren't huge amounts of resources in this area, um, and I've got plenty of iron elsewhere, I think, like, um, like there, and there, and yeah, let's, uh, there, iron isn't really a problem for me at the moment, oh, and a massive one there, and a good copper one there as well, I should, I should claim those two. Uh, so that that isn't a, the iron isn't a problem. So yeah, I didn't want to build all the extra stuff just for the sake of it. Especially as, as I say, I'm I'm now trying trying to get on with the um, all the all the space based stuff. So let's fly back up to my rocket and see if that's got all of the stuff I could possibly want in it. So what was I saying for my shopping list? I need definitely need glass in large quantities, but that should have gone in automatically. I need lots of coal. Need light oil, and I think there was something else. So here we go. We've got light oil now coming in on this belt and being loaded in by this uh, inserter. Coal I'm bringing up here. That's uh, being again being added autom added by this one. Um, and there's lots of belts and things going. That should have gone in. And um, what was the other thing? Glass. Glass is being fed in from up here. So if we have a look in this rocket, we've got 2,000 glass. We've got 6,000 coal. We've got um, no 5,000 coal. No. 3,000 coal. <laughs> that's only, these are only stacks of 50, so it's um, that's 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Um, and and uh, some light oil. That's not too bad. I think I think I want to take up a lot more glass than this. Uh, we've got a smattering of science packs. We've obviously. Oh, I think. I th oh, I know why these are here. They're ones that I ended up picking up by mistake because uh, <laughs> I <laughs> I screwed up somewhere. I ended up having one of my belts feeding science in somewhere it shouldn't have been um was it here yes i think i think somewhere how somehow this belt got rotated so i ended up with masses and masses of red and green science in this uh, in this storage warehouse so i pulled all of them out and i've shoved them in the rocket because what else am i going to do with them this will at least take them up to the um up to this up to the space station where i'm doing all of my research so that was not entirely deliberate but it just means less i have to take up later it's fine um there's not a lot. Of, uh, there's there's some. Maybe there's more sp scaffold up there than I thought there was. So as you can see, with all of these, I've now I've now tweaked the numbers on this one. I've put in six thousand. No, this isn't the one I've tweaked. Tweaked the numbers on this one. I put in two hundred light oil, which should keep me going for a while because two hundred barrels of light oil rather should keep me going for a while because it doesn't take much light oil for the um to do the uh, dubries to make to make the uh, the blank frames. 10,000 scaffold. Okay, there's obviously a lot of scaffold up there, and the only reason I haven't built that bit up is because I ran out of robot ports, which I should have in my personal inventory. Do, 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 do. No, I haven't. Um, let's turn that on, and I'll be brought all of this useful stuff. And let's make that 20. I mean 30. Let's make it 30. Because that's that's a that, because that's a bigger number, and then my logistics bots will fly all of that stuff out to me. Where are they? Where are you, logistics bots? Here come some of them, carrying a a mixture of stuff. But yeah, there's some robot ports in there, so that's so they will bring up all the stuff I've just demanded, and uh, get and, and mean and, and that should mean I'll have everything I need. I'll um, pause briefly and uh, or fast forward the video or something like that, and um, and then we'll and uh, come back when I'm ready to head back up into space again. Uh, yes, one of the other things I keep needing to take up to space with me, or keep needing in space that I'm not taking up automatically, is blue inserters. Uh, there's one of the things up there. It's making the the massive science, uh, sorry, space manufactories requires blue inserters, and so I, d I don't have anything taking them up automatically. I, I probably should, but unfortunately, the rocket is now basically f full in that every side of the of this thing is full of belts and inserters. Now I'm trying to think there's probably a way I could do this differently. I could have a single belt feeding in that's fed by lots and lots of other belts and um, and read off all of that so I could have yeah I could basically just make this a, a, a 
a single inserter putting things into the into the rocket and then a long belt with other belts meeting going onto it and so i'll be able to, that, that way i'll be able to just carry on this exactly the same system but to a much larger scale and that might be worth doing um, that's something I'll consider in the future. But at the moment, some of these things like the blue inserters, I'm just going to be doing manually and yeah, worrying about it like that. Ah, pylons, that's a good idea. I was um yeah, I didn't realise I was running low on those. What else have I The only problem with this is it means I end up taking up a load of stuff that I can't use in space, like the belts and things and the pipes, because they're not magic space pipes and magic space belts. But yeah, never mind. I don't really care about that. Okay, are we done? No, we're not. Still, still some uh, robot ports I'm waiting for. Okay, we've got all of the ones that exist on my in my base, so let's not worry about that. Let's go back into space. Uh, I want to go to Norvis Orbit Landing Pad. Yes. Why is launch disabled? I haven't got a space capsule. Why have I not got a space capsule? Where is my space capsule? Seriously, what have I done with my space capsule? <laughs> I don't seem to have one. That's weird. Fortunately, I'm building them over here. But it's run out of accumulator. Oh, goodness sake. I mean, I shouldn't use these up. They should just always be available. Have some solar and some accumulators. Uh, that's wrong. Put them in here. <laughs> Please hold. Oh, while it's at it, I can talk about my um, this thing down here. This is my massive, massive array of um, accumulators. <laughs> it's still under construction, as you can see, probably because it's just run out again. Uh, yes, it's run run out of accumulators. So. But it's still, it's coming along quite well, and we now have how much? How much power do we have? We have 75.4 gigajoules. Um, I wonder how much the next coronal mass is. Next one to Norvis. 182. 182. And I got up to what? 50, 70, 75. So this is less than half. Th well, this plus this, this, all of this. Is still less than half the size of of power storage that I need for this. This is crazy. Um, I don't I don't even know what to do about that. I could put some steam tanks on my. Um, oh, apparently I've broken this. I'm going to have to go and have a look at that at some point. Um, I could put some massive steam tanks on my um, turbines over here. I'd have to put in a lot more turbines though. So, what was the instantaneous so it's 2.2 gigawatts and I'm able to generate half a gigawatt <laughs> so that would mean four times this that's a lot of turbines and then enough steam tanks to keep them all running for a while which is more manageable to be honest that might be a better way to do this than to um, than to build up these accumulator banks I think that's probably what I'm gonna have to do how long have I got to do this Seven and a half hours. Okay, that's not very long. Um, especially if I go off and start messing around on another planet. Give me that. Uh, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head up there anyway because I still want to get this done. But then when I come back, I'm going to start mess. I'm, I'm going to have to. I'm going to put together some um, uh, some steam tanks and some um, and some more turbines to get that working because I can't see how else to do it really. It's just. Yeah, that's a crazy, crazy amount of power. Rocket time! And then everything starts loading stuff in because, yeah, it hasn't realised that <laughs> the rocket is already, um, the rocket already has all this stuff in it. But never mind. Yay, it's landed successfully. <laughs> Not that I um, had any doubts, of course. <clears throat> Let's take all of. Where are they? All of these. I put them somewhere else. Oh dear. Yeah, I don't have. Frustratingly, I don't have enough storage up here at the moment. Um, I need some more of these warehouses. I'll put these in for now um, because, well, I do need to have. I do need my storage up here somehow, um, and I need to link them up by wire as well. Otherwise, the stuff that's in them won't count. As I said, as I've said before, these things are much more efficient per 
square than the uh, than the big ones, so it's not entirely a bad thing to do it like this. Oops. Okay, so that's oh actually what I could do. Let's put some of my robo ports in here as well. Like that. Stop giving me robo ports back. <laughs> no stupid thing. I put them in there for a reason. Right. Okay, so we've had, I think that was a, um, a construction robot flying off with a roboport to go down here. Maybe it wasn't. Oh, it was. It just didn't have the power to do it all in one flight. <laughs> okay. So now when that's placed, we should now get a flood of other robots. What are they doing? Oh, they're picking up the pipes I put down there before. Yeah, this, this area was a bit... I, I may possibly made this a bit more complicated than I need to, I don't know, but it took a bit of faffing to get this into a into a design I liked. And even then I've got some weird stuff going on here with these pipes, as uh, as we'll um, we'll see in a moment when the robots come over and build them. But essentially I've just got this one snaking back and forth here, because it's the only way I could come up with to sort of to, just to make it all all connect up nicely. But this should work well. What we've got here is the um the really, really cold here we go. The cold thermofluid minus 100C being brought along here and pumped into the um, into the telescopes, which will then do the their telescopy stuff and uh, pump it back out as the, the warm thermofluid at uh, 25 degrees. That comes back along here and goes into the um, into this into this cooler, which will again convert it back into the really cold stuff again. So we've now got three temperatures of thermofluid: as a really cold, sorry, cold, cool, and normal. <laughs> So, yeah, that's that's going okay. How are we doing over here? Okay, the bots have all come over and, and built this up. That's good. Um, nearly, nearly good. There's a couple of bits missing there, but I'm sure they'll finish that off sooner or later. So it's now down to coal and light oil. So light oil is going to be the next thing to worry about up here. I'm not going to do that on camera because it's going to be a bit of a headache and a bit of a faff trying to plumb all of the pipe work in and stuff and get it all the way down to this end. Essentially it's just going to have to run down along here where it's um, where there's a gap. So I'll do that off camera. That can be my thing for the next episode along with defending against that next uh, coronal mass ejection. It'll be nice to actually be able to defend against one of those. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes in about seven hours of playtime which is probably about one or maybe two episodes. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time when hopefully I'll have got this um, astronometric ast blah, 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 ast when I'll I can't talk when I'll have got this astronomic science finished and flowing into the science into the uh, science labs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. <laughs>